launch you. I'd like to take you back to when I started college doing applied physics. We had a lovely module in first year just called measurements. Measurements, that, that was it. And what would you think we'd study in that? Bubbles, bubbles for six weeks. I know more about bubbles now than I ever thought I would in my life. And by the end of that, I just put it to the back of my head and thought, well, I'm never going to use that again ever. And I was thinking that too, but when I was trying to work out what talk I do here, I was in the pub and, you know, one of the guys said, am I polluted or are the bubbles actually going down in my Guinness instead of up? The two things clicked and I thought, why don't I look into that? So, first of all, we need a pint of Guinness. And here's one I prepared earlier. Now, this worked in practice, so I'm hoping this works. Yeah, that's, oh yeah, there we go, that's fine. Uh, so, bubbles in Guinness are actually quite interesting. The difference between Guinness uh, compared to several other drinks is they're actually brewed with nitrogen, not just CO2. And that makes a very, very big difference, you see. Yeah, it'll probably be fine. Um, there we go. The, using nitrogen causes a different uh, pressure in the bubbles and them to react differently. The bubbles actually are going up, but if you look at this point quite closely, you'll see they're actually, looks like they're going down. What's happening there is the bubbles are going up, they're hit, interacting with the head, and the head has actually forced them to the side. It's actually the shape of the glass itself. Uh, this is called a tulip glass, so this kind of a shape. So think of Kim Kardashian doing a handstand, you'll get the kind of shape <laughs> idea there. <laughs> it's that kind of shape that you need for the bubbles to actually go down. And then they basically continue to cycle and go back up again. The reason that the head is so creamy here, but I know this is a shockingly poor point of Guinness, so I apologize. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Aaron. I wasn't allowed to bring an entire pub on stage. I'll to, hopefully for the future, we'll try that again. But it's because of the, if we go back to what we learned probably in science class, PV is equal to NRT, the ideal gas law, the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional to each other. So the pressure in the bubbles um, uh, affects the volume of the head inversely. So that's how that is formed. But you might hear something here. There you can hear better now. There's a little ball at the bottom of that. It's called a Guinness widget, and it's very like a ping pong ball. Basically, in order to get a head like this on a point outside of a pub, you have to use a little bit of a trick. It's kind of like, in order to get the bubbles going to this, you have to drop in this widget with a little hole in it, with a drop of liquid nitrogen before the beer goes into it. This gives it a bit of a kickstart when you open up the can. It actually fires a jet of Guinness out of this, which sounds class, uh, which, gets the which gets the bubbles going. Because the bubbles in this are a bit like a doctor on a United Airlines flight. They need a bit of encouragement to get going. <laughs> See, I can be very topical. <laughs> and that causes the head to be poured perfectly. So before I leave you, I leave you with a bit of prose by the great Flann O'Brien. When things go, Things go wrong and will not come right, but you do the best you can. When things look black as a night itself, a pointed plane is your only man. Slant you.